Hey everyone, it's Arcanus Gaming. Thank you for tuning into another Wilson video. And in today's video, I figured I'd go over the Bladestorm build that I've been playing around with. Um, this is pretty much the only build that I've been playing the whole time, level 60, and I've just been fine tuning it. Um, I was trying to make this video a little bit earlier, but um, I tried to. I went into too much detail, and the video is going to take way too long. So I figured I'd go pretty fast. Um, to show you the abilities, passives, and the items that I have on right now, and then showcase the build a little bit at the end. Um, so we'll go right into it. So again, I'm going to be moving a little bit fast. So this is kind of one of my first um, um, build guides. I do have some other, but I'm still inexperienced in making them. So please let me know in the comments below anything I can do to make it a little bit better. But um, first ability that we did pick is the Wings of Ishmir, and these are the modifiers we went for. Um, rage, rage, uh, rage generation plus 30, um, grants a buff for each enemy hit on landing, critical hit chance score, um, reduces the cooldown to only having stamina. So no cooldown now, but it costs a stamina point. And then uh, increases damage dealt by yourself and allies in the area of effect of landing. So we're getting another damage buff as well. And just increased damage. And from what I've uh, found out with the stunning apparatus modifier is that when you land on something, let's say you land on one mob, um, you get one stack of the buff, and then you land on another four, it goes up to five stacks, so you have five stacks now. It's not like you land on one, so you get one. You land on four, so you get four. It keeps building up until you have five. <clears throat> And even when you have five, if you land on one enemy afterwards, uh, it keeps it at five. And I believe it refreshes the duration. So that's good to know. Um, next ability that we have here is Sovereign Shout. And the modifiers we picked are 15% chance to all resistance score. Um, you, um, applies weakness when you shout. Increases duration of buffs granted by the skill. Uh, reduce or store stamina when the skill is cast. So now that our wings of Ishmir cost stamina, we can use our shout to um, gain more stamina and keep using the, the leap. Um, next one we have here is Raging Berserker. So 25% rage generation on hit. So increases generation, uh, rage regeneration per hit on the enemy and while the skill is active. Uh, grants a temporary critical chance buff, so that's always good to have. And increases the effectiveness of all buffs granted by this uh, skill and other skills. <laughs> So getting more crit and we're getting more resistance from uh, that buff. And then our next defensive ability that we chose to go is um, <clears throat> Juggernaut. Um, of course, this puts a shield on you, mitigating a lot of damage. So the modifiers we went for this is Grant Rage when receiving damage. Uh, inflicts a portion of your weapon damage on enemies attacking the shield, so like thorns. Increases damage absorption, but reduces movement speed. Uh, chance to inflict stun on enemies that are attacking, that's always good. Reduces damage received from projectiles, good as well. Uh, reduces rage cost, mm, not bad. I mean, we don't really need this, but it's it's always have it's always good to reduce any rage from other abilities since the main thing of your ability is blade storming. And then reduces cooldown for more chances to put the shield up, and increases shield absorption to mitigate more damage. Now this is the most damaging ability. Um, of the build is the bleeding edge ability and the modifiers that we chose for that are the ailment damage, 30% uh, more weapon damage, reduced rage cost, uh, the axe continues to spin after being thrown, uh, this increases the rage cost by a lot and reduces the damage but it, it's on the screen a little bit longer so that could help you clearing uh, multiple elites and things like that. This one I am iffy about, I don't know if I, I if I take this off so I can do more damage reduce the duration and it follows me um, so this might be actually a little bit better than that so either or um, if you'd want it but um, next one we went to is increased critical hit chance more crit the better more damage and then the critical damage so Again, this is going to be our most damaging ability. I might try using Astral Orbit. I, I've been playing around with Unstoppable Momentum, but I might try this out for a little bit. Um, because this one decreases the weapon damage by 41%. And I want to do as much damage as we can. This is all, let's be real. Let's see if that flows into our build, though. Okay, so it's not long, out as long. Let's see how fast we can go into Whirlwind after we use it. Not bad at all. So we'll see what we can do with that. Um, and then, of course, Bladestorm, um, 
the main key about the build here uh, and the modifiers that we have is increases rage generation from enemies killed by the skill, uh, reduces rage cost, uh, can be held to prolong the duration of the skill. So this is what makes you able to control the blade storm. Um, enemies hit by the skill spawns health globes. You cannot use potions while in the blade storm animation, so that's going to be good to heal up. Uh, and then we have increased critical damage, increases damage, and increases critical chance when an enemy is killed by the blade storm. So critical chance is going to play a really big role in this build. You'll see in the passives. Um, so the first passive tree I'm going to go over, it's not the order I went, but um, we're level 60 now, so I figured... Actually, I'll go in the order I went so it doesn't confuse everyone. So the first tree we went down is the Soldier Tree, and I'll go over the big orbs that I went for. Um, the first big orb we went for is the Critical Hit Chance. Now, this is Critical Hit Chance score, not straight up crit. Uh, that confused me for a second, but um, this is always still good to have because the more crit, the better. The second big orb we got in the Soldier Tree is Second Win. Good for survivability. If you take a lot of burst damage out of nowhere, um, you're going to get a lot of health regen back and live. Uh, excuse me. It does have a cooldown, but it's it's useful in a situation like that. And then the next big orb that we got, I'm going to call them orbs. I'm not sure what the term is. <laughs> yeah. So please excuse me. Uh, the next orb we got in the soldier tree is the 25 rage um, per hit taken. So we're going to be whirlwinding. We're going to be in the thick of things. The more damage we take, the more rage we get, the more we can whirlwind. So really good. And then the second tree we went down to is the warmonger tree. Um, now this is the this is the path I went. You don't have to go in this order, but I'm just letting you know so you guys don't get confused. Uh, so the warmonger tree, the first big orb that we got is plus 50% material damage, but we can only deal material damage, and material damage is rend, poison, or rend, toxic, and physical. And we pretty much do rend and physical, so we don't have to worry about that at all. <clears throat> So we got that. The next big orb down the Warmonger Tree is Feast for the Crows. Gives all forms of damage. Life Leech. Life Leech heals you on the next tick of health regeneration. So always good to have with the health regeneration that we're getting and the Life Leech. We, we're going to be living a lot, lot longer. And again, we're going to be in the thick of things. So that's always good to have things like that. And then the next tree that we went down to is the siege breaker and this is probably the most controversial thing that i have in the build so far and you'll see why in a second but the first big orb we got is the salvatory anchor so right now we have a bruiser chest equipped and you can tell what a, what item you have equipped by just hovering over the ability and then to the top left of the item uh, you see under chest piece it says bruiser so this allows us to have more health regeneration for every health point equipped on the bruiser chest piece now, I don't know, and I mean, that's a lot of health, so it works out. So we have that, and then the next big orb we went to in the war Siege Breaker, excuse me, tree is Disallowing Vessel. Now, while stationary, I'll, I'll read the ability and explain how it works with Bladestorm. So while stationary, you gain a point of inexorable every few seconds. Each point of inexorable reduces your movement speed and increases your damage. Moving will cause a stack to be lost. Now, you're wondering, well, we have a Bladestorm build. We're going to be moving all the time. But there's a cool thing that I found out. While you are blade storming, uh, I'll show you. So as we run around, we're losing damage but gaining speed. So again, this this blade storm build is a little bit slower than most, but with our leaps and things like that, we can be moving extremely fast still. Um, so we have no stacks, and I'll just show you. Our blade storm damage is at 3,900, and now let's stand still wait for our stacks to come up and I'm trying to go fast because I don't want this video to be too long uh, but I just I really do want to explain how the build works so now that we have full stacks our blade sword damage has increased and now when we're blade storming as you see we're not losing any stacks so I'm guessing while you're blade storming it doesn't count as movement I'm not sure but it works so that's something cool I found out so we're having each stack is six percent damage so we're getting sixty percent more damage um, for full stacks and cool thing when you leap roll do anything does not lose a stack that's why it's so important to have so many leaps in our build um, so that's probably the coolest combo that I have for this blade storm build and pretty much the center of the build um, so yeah disallowing vessel does work with blade storm as long as you're not 
running as long as you're using the ability um, and I will showcase the build just to show you that I mean it all works and then we did go a little bit further out to get into the child of fury uh, tree and the big orb we got for this is the furious appetite so we don't regenerate willpower anymore we, we regenerate rage so that's always good to have in a blade storm build or whirlwind build so we picked up that and then we moved over to the exorcist tree to pick up academic field work so every time we kill a champion we get headhunter and every stack of headhunter increases our material damage by 15 percent so the more we kill uh, if it's a champion, the more damage we get. And I think the champions are like the yellow or named mobs, uh, yellow and higher. Um, I don't think the blue ones count, so I'm not sure about that, but um, I think that's how it works. So that's pretty much our passive tree. And you can see how cool this um, this build works. So essentially, you're going to be whirlwinding, and I'll show off the build in a second. When you're running out of rage, leap to get the buffs, leap into enemies shout to leap even more and then use our bleeding edge for huge burst damage on any elites and we have our shield just to mitigate damage again we are moving a little bit slower with all these modifiers and the passive tree but um, with the leaps you can see how fast we can actually get still and all the whole time we're buffing our damage so this is just the most fun build I've had so far. I didn't know that the Siege Breaker, uh, or excuse me, what is this called again? This allowing vessel was gonna work. I wasn't gonna go Bladestorm build until I tried it out, it ended up working. So hey, might as well stick with it. This seems like something fun. Now this is not your typical, like, I, I, I guess you wanna say like brain dead Bladestorm build. You do have to pay attention to all your buffs and um, your stacks and things like that. But um, this combo works out really well as long as you play it right. And, um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Oh, we're actually going to the items as well. Um, <clears throat> don't really have anything crazy. Uh, this is the highest damage two-handed. I just picked up the highest damage two-handed sword I found. 350 and 358 top end damage. Um, it's the highest that I've seen so far. There's a good amount of physical damage and it has a critical hit chance score on it as well. Oh, wait, I'll go after that in a second. Sorry, I'm kind of scattered. Again, I'm getting better at these guide videos, so... Please let me know in the comments anything I can improve on. Um, we got material damage. Pretty much the theme of this is get crit chance, material damage, uh, um, ferocity. That's pretty much everything you want in the build. Maybe some like more rage regeneration um, and things like that. But again, ferocity, crit chance, maybe some crit, jam crit damage. Um, and just straight up material damage or straight up percent damage is what you're looking for. And a sh really strong two-hander, so those whirlwinds or those bladestorm ticks can be really juicy. But that's pretty much the theme, uh, just straight percent damage. Um, and yeah, crit chance as much as you can. And if you want to get a little bit tanky, get a chest like this with health and stuff like that and defensive. But we're just trying to go for damage. We just got lucky with some cool defensive items as well. And this is a really good uh, ring that I found. Regeneration on kill, health regeneration, global life leech, maximum health. And things like that can make you really tanky. If you're finding yourself getting overwhelmed and dying a lot, switch some damage pieces off uh, for some more tanky stuff. And um, the damage will come through the abilities and the buffs you're getting and the passive. So if anything, just look for your items to be a little bit more tanky and make you a little bit more tankier. But um, that's pretty much the overview of the build. We'll go ahead and show some footage. I know that's what you guys have been looking forward to. But um, oh, and I guess we'll go over the demon that we chose, the aspect of the apocalypse. I, I don't think it really matters. We just use that as like an oh shit button. But um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and show off the let me get the full force of the build let me know what you guys think of, of the build let me know if anything if i can approve on anything but uh, i really do appreciate you tuning in and enjoy the build 